beautiful, beautiful people. I, I would like makes a how-to video. I would like to believe that made sense coming out. It just didn't survive the Pedro translation matrix. Possibly. <laughs> uh, I've been drinking a lot. Uh, no, no. <laughs> so. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Valve threatens to update their search engine, among other things, and War Thunder has enabled EAC, that's easy anti-cheat, and that might be a problem if you play it with Proton. Ah, and we have a new version of Proton, and D9VK is bumped to dot .20, and NVIDIA's new display driver, 435.21 has been released with some very important Vulcan updates. Valve, true American company that it is, wants its stay in court against the European Union, and someone decompiled Super Mario 64. I didn't really have anything for this, so I just wrote down my uncle works at Nintendo and he can beat up your <laughs> uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Linux Gamecast <laughs> Weekly, because um, we get you joining us live in chat, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. That's right. Yay. Beautiful people. I'm Old Man Vin, joined, um, not every week, but normally on Wednesdays, uh, Hollywood Jill hanging out in L.A. in her million dollar home. And no. um, <laughs> the man in soon to be nice and frigid Britannia, and that is oh, one yeah. Pedro Montez. Check <laughs> in. What's her coming? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, before we get started, do you like to see what's going on in each other's life? Organs, lady and gentlemen. Um, what's up? Jill, you wrote the most. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, besides playing lots of games and doing streams here on LGC, I'm still recovering from the con flu from Open Source Summit San Diego, but actually I'm doing much better. Except for just before <laughs> the pre-pre super shows. <laughs> <laughs> but I am doing better. <laughs> Tap that evacuate button, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, are you up to your normal distro hopping self? Is that? Uh, I may be in a couple of weeks <laughs> because once again, Solus has decided to screw with my DualShock 4. And I like this controller. I really do. So not being able to use it reliably for games is kind of a big deal for me. And this is like the third time that they've done it. So mm. that's me done with Solus. Wow. Uh, I've uh, stood up for the distro and defended oh, it, he's its keep choices. Going. Okay. Yeah, several <laughs> times, but yeah, no, too much is too much, and I'm just fucking done. Have you tested it on another system just to make sure you don't have like a oh, yeah. flaky? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, precision laptop right here on the L side of the desk is running Fedora 30. And wouldn't you know it, it works just fine with all the games that I had issues with. So, yeah, no. Bye, Solus. I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> if I, like, started this up and it didn't work right, I'm like, ah, it's just it's too red for the stars. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is purple. <laughs> <laughs> I have one of those too. Yeah, that's yes. Nin Nintendo purple. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, over here, um, I'm ups and downs. I'm playing on eBay. I talked uh, yesterday on the live stream, played a bit of Bayonet. I wanted to show everybody how that's running with D9VK. And I started off saying, just stay off eBay if you don't want to spend money. Doesn't matter. Don't even go to the site. Don't look around because the first thing you're going to find is going to be too expensive. Then you're going to do a search. <laughs> For that same thing, slightly less expensive. And you're going to find something that's going to be, just stay off of it. Scott brought up a good point. He's like, well, if people would quit selling stuff on eBay, and I'm like, I know, right? It's not my fault. It's not my personal responsibility. <laughs> um, but I did find one thing that I'm glad that I lost the bid on because that would have resulted in me having to start up a GitHub page for like a device driver. Mm -hmm. Not outside of my wheelhouse, but. It hasn't been in my wheelhouse for well over a decade, but there's another piece of hardware that may or may not show up working, and that's going to be a fun adventure. Stay tuned yeah. for that. So, Pedro, one thing we do have to stay tuned for each and every week <laughs> is the horse. What's it up to yes, this Yes, and the horse, uh, it, it's not looking good. It, it's <laughs> running up to uh, a bunch of different people from... An entirely new continent, and I don't think it has the antibodies because it's the Steam, Steam. Linux update, update of, of the week. week. 
see everyone gets a like C minus for effort on that one, but <laughs> <laughs> but yes, as the case may be, uh, Valve is very much looking forward to its day in court against the EU because you may remember a while back we talked uh, about Valve and like five other gaming uh, publishers like Xenomax and Bandai Namco and all the others. Uh, they, uh, the EU had basically said, you guys are, um, preventing people from buying games in cheaper countries when in the EU we have this thing called free trade, uh, where mm -hmm. we very much allow people to buy stuff in countries where it's cheaper and that's totally okay. We totally accept that. And Valve and those other companies were found that they weren't allowing people to do that. So they said, it's like, you can either stop doing that or we're going to sue you. And everyone else, like all of the other companies, even Bethesda, I mean, Zenimax, same people, but different name. Um, they said, eh, no, that's totally okay. We'll comply with what you say. Valve, on the other hand, said, no, nah. <laughs> we're going to yeah. we're going to go to court because we're uh, American. And that's how we do things. <laughs> <laughs> Good so, point. <laughs> how does this rock and roll? I mean, when I'm definitely thinking about this, this is about regional pricing, correct? Uh, yes, <laughs> it, it is about like countries, uh, like certain countries in the EU that are that have a lower average income. Mm -hmm. They have cheaper games, obviously. Right. So yeah. people were going to those countries or like buying um, keys in those countries and then selling them at a lower price in countries that could afford to pay a higher price for them. So that that was a big one. <laughs> So mm. the solution to this is just to make it a flat high price because I'm a company and I'm not going to make it the low price. I'm going to make it the highest price. That's, uh, I'm guessing that is one of the arguments that Valve is going to bring up when they do go to court. No, like, that's not the argument. That's money. what <laughs> is going to happen, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. So I, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm trying to think about like if I live in like a smaller area and like, oh, so the games that I were just able to afford or now in the stratosphere and so i'm just gonna have to pirate yeah them. yeah <laughs> brilliant that's probably yeah. how it's going to end up mm. Jill, yeah thoughts? and it's sad because yeah because i thought um uh margaret vestager the european commissioner um, made up a good point in the article uh, that consumers should not be prevented from shopping around between member states to find the best available deal you know, that makes yeah, sense. That, I mean, that's the principle <laughs> of free trade. Exactly. So unfortunately, <laughs> Valve is in the business of making money, and this would cost them a lot of money. So yeah, they're going to defend very it. True. <laughs> this is, uh, I, I honestly don't see this. Uh, it's extra work for Valve, and I'm not sticking up for Valve in any ways, but I, I don't see how this <laughs> helps the people because they're going to end up having to pay more for games. It, no, it doesn't help the people. Yeah. It helps Valve because it ensures that everyone will be paying more money for games. Right. And Valve would be like, hey, man, we would like our current system that doesn't force mm. people to pay yes. more for games. <laughs> it's like you can either leave it as it is where people get prices tailored to their region mm -hmm. or we can just have the one price and it's going to be probably the U.S. price because that's the only one that they're going to be able to enforce. Well, they could do the mm. EU minus, you know, that island. Oh, yeah, this island I currently live in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you could have your own regional pricing. It would just be a little tiny. <laughs> I mean, it won't be in the EU after October, apparently. I don't uh, know. Anyway, <laughs> check this out. Uh, on mm. the Steam database, they posted a little bit of a note to read from that. And they say Valve's working on a new Steam Labs experiment, which plans on improving search page I'm this is verbatim the search page with more filters and infinite scrolling oh yay new filters include hiding owned ignored wished games and possibly <gasps> it's all over prayers finally answered a max price control speaking of um ching you know the cash right and like I, I i only have this <laughs> much money in my steam wallet so don't show me things that i can't buy yeah. Sounds like a good idea. And, you know, I'm going to say this before we even get started. You can say what you want about Epic. And I know I've said my piece. Um, 
It's forced valve. I'm going to say it's forced valve. Valve's decided we better start trying to do things again as a company, as opposed to the lumbering giant of like, meh, you're going to buy it anyway. They're doing things like, you know, reworking the chat, making changes, making a functioning search. That would be brilliant. <laughs> but then again, at the end of the day, it's valve things, but at least they're trying. There's movement. There's an attempt. You know, we love them for Proton. Thanks, Code Weavers. Uh, but, and the XVK and D9VK, but at least Valve is bankrolling. Ah, but yeah. this, I think a cert, do you normally use Valve Search? Like when I, when I use Valve Search, it's called Google.com. <laughs> when, when I'm looking for the a game. Valve Search, it's usually if I start typing the name of the game, it's usually one of the first two results that comes up, and that's where I click. And mm. yeah. don't ever see the search results. <laughs> this is true. Mm. Um, I, I do use the filters a lot too. So that's that that is good. And yeah, so Valve Search really does need every improvement it can get. So <laughs> I used to use the filters, but it was like, we're not showing you certain things based on your filters. It's like, oh no, no, let's get rid of those. Oh, to take that back. Movies. I used to take that out because yeah, yeah. You could just, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that like, was... <laughs> take the the box that says games. Like mm -hmm. oh, there we go, <laughs> done. <laughs> but yeah, no. To your point, Ven. I don't think Epic has actually made Valve do anything. I think <laughs> that's only made Valve be a bit more uh, open about what they're doing and actually say that they're doing stuff instead of just being Valve and being quiet about everything unless someone kicks up a fuss and they're forced to say that they're doing something. One thing I will say, I think somebody said, oh, well, now they've gotten better with their customer support. We cover this stuff week in and week out. Valve hired this customer support people before the Epic Store was announced. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's not necessarily the case, but I think they are trying to do something. Maybe... Maybe it's a coinky dink. Good luck spelling that for a show title. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's still pretty cool. Let's talk about Proton real quick. Yeah. So Proton uh, 4.11-3 is out of lots of changes. Um, there has been hang and crash fixes to Valve's experimental F-Sync feature, which boosts performance. And they fixed new crashes related to text input, especially in Unreal Engine 4 games, including Marda and Deep Rock Galactic. And I, f I found that flaw in other games as well. <laughs> and uh, Ven has something important to add to this as well. No, I don't quit over-promising. Quit over-promising, <laughs> man. Uh, I will say they did a version bump, D9VK. So this is mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing things get lined up. We're not waiting because that's how I'd add point 20. And yeah. one of the mm -hmm. cool things that I wanted to play around with last night is they're changing the way that they're dealing with game pads. It's not a virtualized device or anything. They're just doing mm -hmm. like a direct input approach to it. Which the best I can tell, um, is working fun. And yeah. they have added, and this is kind of curious, Pedro. What do you make of this support for old VR titles? And I'm like, from what man, <laughs> like 2018? <laughs> I think that was a little bit of a dig at um, Oculus. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> because, you know, Oculus is uh, at this point in time, the old VR headset, because it's it's the one that kind of restarted the whole uh, VR thing after it died in 1992, 1993 ish. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I guess it, they mean like the original Oculus games that showed up on Steam. Maybe those I don't know. I'm kind of thinking, I, I want to believe what you typed in Strider in chat and like the ones from like 92 and that era. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> when you would go to a mall or someplace like that and it would be like five pounds and you could spend 20 <laughs> seconds. All I remember is being attacked by a pterodactyl. It's like, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, you know a five FPS pterodactyl. Well, but, yeah. don't be generous. I'm like, don't you mean pterodactyl? And it's like, no, nah, dude, I was a kid. That was a pterodactyl. <laughs> so it Very was. good. It's a figure that tears. Uh, in any case, uh, <laughs> I am curious to see uh, what the. Um, F sync implementation looks like, and that's possibly a thing that I will do once I get away from Solus because there's no way that Solus is going to be introducing the um, 
changes that Valve made to the kernel until those show up in the main kernel. Uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, no, um, um, I look forward to that. Little boy play, <laughs> do you think we'll ever get yeah. VR for, oh, I don't know, Rocket League? <laughs> you know, I yes. wouldn't put them past that, but that's after they're done with their uh, epic exclusivity. Uh, <laughs> Rocket League 166. Uh, who'd have thunk it? It's still here, but September's right around the corner. They do have some um, new stuff coming out. There's the Rocket Pass 4. Uh, the new uh, season begun on, uh, what was it? August 28th. And it will be going mm -hmm. on for another five weeks, so you should have enough time to get the new car and the new stuff that the new season brings with itself. And there's also a couple of fixes and a couple of updates, just, you know, keep that in mind. It's mostly just the usual new stuff that each season brings, like new hats, new toppers, new <laughs> antennas, new trails, new wheels, that type of dealio. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I would highly recommend holding up and not actually buying this season pass <laughs> on accounts of the epic exclusive that's coming yeah. next month. Allegedly, yeah. man. I, I That's how I do all my purchasing decisions based on hearsay and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Maybe. Uh, so so wait on on instead of getting the watermelon wheels, I uh, uh wait for some strawberry wheels. That'll be cool. <laughs> so um the game's audio mix has been updated, including audio priority rebalancing, HDR audio, and object elevation. So that's always good for immersion. Uh they're improving the audio every update actually, it seems. <laughs> I'm down with it. I like how it rock and rolls. Like the most of you, there's there's two categories. There are people, they're <laughs> filthy casual Rocket League players like us. We know we. You're like, but you have a hundred hours. That's a hundred hours played like thirty minutes at a time over four years or three years. Then there's people who know what a rocket pass is. I'm like I don't even know what that is, man. Um, all I do is I launch after every update, and hey, look, it works. Okay, that'll be good for Saturday. Yep. <laughs> and who who knows? I mean, we, we could speculate. It will probably, it, we know it's going to the Epic Store. We don't know what's going to happen after then, because even Sinosis is like, ah, we'll tell you when, yeah, we, we need to keep selling when you copies. When that happens, we'll let you know. Yeah, keep buying mm -hmm. it on Steam until then. <laughs> mm. So something you can't really buy on Steam, but you can play, because it's kind of free to play. We're talking about War Thunder. They made an announcement. Hey, man, we're going to rock the easy anti-cheat, EAC. That's kind of brilliant, and you're thinking to yourself, but Vin, this has got a native Linux port. And I'm like, yeah, it does. EAC works on Linux. Uh-huh. Keep keep talking. And at the end of the day, you'll finish that with, so why are you even talking about this? Well, maybe you've played the native Linux version on the native <laughs> Linux um, with the native EAC. It's like, man, this runs like butt. Because <laughs> it does, and even the developers are like, oh, we 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 have a Vulcan render in there. Does it work?" Shrug emoji from the fucking developers, man. They're like, "We don't know," <laughs> um, which it doesn't, by the way. There's still like missing textures and stuff like that. So fortunately, we do have Proton, which is in there, and it's one of those games, you know, the ones that give you the bad case of the sads. When you play the Proton version, it's so much better than the um, yeah. native version. <laughs> and that's what most people, you know, I, I don't judge anybody who plays War Thunder. And some people, it's that game, you know, you might be into it. Mm -hmm. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's even got mixed reviews. A lot of people are not happy about that. And completely free to play with <laughs> a gang of DLC. You know, that's how they make their money. The problem is EAC with Wine and Proton, it's not going to happen. It doesn't work. So you... And this weird, weird issue is uh, you're going to be stuck having to use the native version, which for this particular instance is not the optimum experience. It yeah. really isn't. And uh, War Thunder, I would think, is big enough that it would be a big incentive for Valve to get their rivers of money to actually, you know, do that thing that they said that they were doing and talking to the easy anti cheat people to get them to allow people to use wine or proton in this case uh, the, to play the, the fine game. folks 
combined war thunder and i'm paraphrasing barely because mm -hmm. i'm trying to be a little nicer they said be grateful for what you got yeah and yeah. that's the thing War Thunder has a uh, native Linux version, and the version with Easy Anti Cheat is crap. That is mm -hmm. the big one. But we've had native games with Easy Anti Cheat. Uh, Robocraft is one of them. That has worked marvelously for years with Easy Anti Cheat. They've never had an issue with it. Oh, it's still so going to work why? with the AC. Um, it's just not going to work with one. Yeah. I mean, you can yeah. play the native version. And yeah. This I wanted to bring this up mainly because this is not going to be the last time we run into this. Mm -hmm. So keep yeah. that in mind. Double fine uh, from the fine folks at Microsoft. Uh, they have a new bit of kit out. Yeah. So this is Knights and Bikes. It's a coming of age story starring Nessa and Demelza exploring the coast of Penfersey, a British island, on their trusty bikes looking for a legendary lost treasure and a Go Goonies-inspired tale of excitement, danger, fun, and friendship. Yay! So they got me at 80s Goonies-inspired action-adventure. I like games like this a lot. And it looks like this award-winning, beautifully hand-painted game. What is it, Did you look game. at that and you're like, I can finally be the edge lord I always wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go well, search for my treasure. Well, the one emo protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think Jill's going to pick, Genius? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I think Jill would have actually gone with the really hyper ginger one. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, this will be fun because you can also play online co-op with one friend for up to two players. So <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping in the future they make it four friends. That would be kind of nice. But, <laughs> a, but yeah, <laughs> this will probably happen. Double Fine's been excellent. I'm like, hey, man, take a look at this. I'm like, are you sure about this one? <laughs> <laughs> Online multi, it's not going to end well, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I looked at it, it's like, that looks a lot like Costume Quest. Oh, it's exactly. Like, oh, but it's not being developed by Double Fine. Oh, but it's being published, published by Double published Fine. By Double All Fine. right. Okay. So clearly this is an instance of a developer who liked <laughs> uh, Costume Quest and they really wanted to make Costume Quest 2 or at least a spiritual successor to Costume Quest. I thought there was Costume Quest 2. Was there? Probably. I, I per played the first one. <laughs> yeah, I played Costume Quest. I, I, I didn't see it too. Maybe there is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they didn't want to run afoul of old Tim the Schaefer's uh, IP, so they decided, let's make a new one. What? Oh, Din's <laughs> Legacy. Yes, that's the new game. Um, no, I was talking about may... this Costume Quest 2 that shows up in my search box. Uh, oh, okay. I, okay. <laughs> so there is one. Okay. <laughs> I never played it. <laughs> I I hadn't either, but I, I had thought there might be one. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I mean, it, being right can be exhausting, but I'm going to power through. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, this is clearly very much in the same vein that uh, Costume Quest tried to do things. So yeah, no, it, mm -hmm. by all means, we need more crazy stuff like what um, Double Fine used to do. And even if Double Fine are not the ones developing it, I'm glad that they're throwing their money at people who are. It's definitely got some of that Double Fine funk on it. As soon as I looked at like the screenshots and I'm like, yeah, that looks like something from Double Fine, even though yeah. it's... <laughs> it's only being published mm -hmm. by them. Yeah, <laughs> I, it looks good. It's priced to sell. So I might, might give it a... I have more interest yeah. in it in that than I do in this next one. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, we actually need to talk about uh, Din's Legacy first. No. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you may remember a while back there was a Diablo clone called Din's Curse. And it it looked a little bit janky, like Din's Legacy looks right now, uh, because that engine is starting to show its age. But, yeah, it, it was genuinely fun. And I'm glad that the developer, I think it's a, this is a one person type of dealio. Uh, I'm glad that the developer is still doing this because clearly he knows the Diablo genre very well and he knew how to make a fun game, even if it did look a bit jank. This is one of those that mechanics very much trump um, aesthetics and 
I'm okay with this. I'm totally okay with this. The price is still a bit high, but it, it just came out, so I guess that's to be expected. It's got multiplayer, online multiplayer, online coop, uh, yeah. cloud saves, that's good. Do we need anything crazy? Nope. Just uh, no. a core two duo, five hundred and twelve, and a GeForce yeah. two. Ooh, I want a challenge accepted on that. Man, you may get a GeForce two later on. Yeah. To, to that you'll get Mesa with OpenGL two point one. So yeah, you can probably run it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and I'm actually looking forward to playing this because we've on Jordan stream we've played Torchlight two quite a bit, and I really enjoyed that. And this game looks very familiar, and has this very similar mechanics. So it looks like fun. Mm. I'm down with Torchlight right up until I. Because I keep it's like, why haven't I put more time into Torchlight? And it's the click mechanic to play. I'm like, nope, I don't like that. Mm. That gets old. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that was the thing. Right. The Diablo in the early noughties, mm. it was just... Made it easy. Yeah, yeah. click, 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 click. I yeah. didn't have a Diablo running in wine. <laughs> it, it, it ran. It, it Actually, Diablo, uh, the first one, ran very well in wine. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't feel like financing developers that didn't have Linux versions of the games. You know me. All right. Now can we talk about the other thing? Yes, now Fine. we can talk about yeah. Bart Sale, the fourth. Uh, the director's yeah. cut. Yeah, it's it's Bart Sale. It's the fourth installment. Use of alcohol uh, and violence. Pretty much accompanied with song or something sort of resembling a song. Uh, it's developed by In Exile Entertainment, uh, the last surviving uh, outcasts of the old Obsidian slash Black Isle. Uh, and they haven't gone epic exclusive like their friends at, Obsidi <laughs> at Obsidian have. Okay, so, hey, explain to me how this isn't Final Fantasy with a skin back. Uh, <laughs> this is a uh, dungeon crawler. Like uh, an OG dungeon crawler, like your tower of what's it called? And the one we had uh, that was in a humble bundle that you were prisoners and you had to do things. I, I don't remember. Let me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. Explain to me how the Legend fighting. Explain to me how the fighting uh, is different from Final Fantasy. It's real time. That didn't look real time. At it all. is real time because uh, if you remember Legend of Grimrock, it was. Uh, basically, it was real time, and you have to be quick on the clicks uh, or the shortcut keys of which character you wanted to attack at that time, and you had a little bit of a cooldown. And it's yeah, it's a uh, it's a dungeon crawler in the old style. Of, that looks uh, like a grid. Crawling. Yes, grid based. You can real see time. your characters laid out as you would in an mm. old dungeon crawler, except the old dungeon crawlers it was just a little square mm -hmm. that you had like two right. at the top and two at the bottom. <laughs> I don't know. This is so not my game. I'm just curious. I'm asking questions. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Uh, no, it, it is. If you played one of the old dungeon crawlers, this one will uh, f make you feel right at home. And unlike uh, Bard's Tale 3, which was like a top-down isometric adventure type deal, uh, this one is very much a return to its roots. So... Well, it looks like it has a sense mixed. of humor on it. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, that's always been like the thing with the Bart Stale series was like, eh, they're they're trying to tell a story, but they're doing it through a very pie in the face slapdash style of humor. All right. That can go a long way. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to it. Now let's talk about something mm -hmm. that's right up my alley. <laughs> Clearly. And by that, I'm talking about dashing dinosaurs and sexy centaurs. A bunch of dinosaurs, dragons, and other mythical beasts are putting on a modern day adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> no, I, this is not Ven in a Fever Dream. No. <laughs> no, no. Because we all know the real drama is backstage. Uh, because something else. What, all right. Have you ever wanted to play that? You know, a bunch of dinosaurs, dragons, and mythical beasts. Putting on that modern adap adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. Because you're in fucking luck, kids. They made it. Both of you, get excited. Uh, if you're out there, this is definitely a thing, man. And, well, I'm, I'm just kind of looking through it. And, mm. uh, you know, I'm powering through the nope. Uh, it, it, <laughs> There's a lot of powering to be done there, yes. You got to struggle a bit. And I'm seeing all the dinosaurs, and dinosaurs had feathers, man. And like the unicorns, uh, we all know unicorns traditionally were nonverbal. That's a scent unicorn. 
mind yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And they, communicate, they communicated with a mixture of um, interpretive dance and smell. So I don't know if this is historically accurate. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get at, man. Aww. I don't know. <laughs> It's currently nine ninety nine single player, and what made me even happier, this is a Stegosaurus game development mothering franchise. Yes, yep. <laughs> this this is brilliant. I love this. It's this makes adorable. me happy. It's, um, <laughs> They've made all of the dinosaur and oh like, yeah, army of really overt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really <laughs> overt. <laughs> <over, laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that's what i was saying that i went and looked at their catalog and i was like you guys have already made all the jokes i was going to but by even yeah. better you've named the game in after that joke all right fair enough well done clearly they found a market that people who appreciate the jokes and they're targeting that <laughs> we've played some weird ones man so yeah it, it's your yeah <laughs> it's your average poorly drawn text adventure game but that you know Things are going to bang at some point if you play your cards right. And if that's your thing, more power to you. So maybe you want to check that out. Maybe not. Either way, it exists because Steam is going to Steam. Mm -hmm. All right. Coming up next, uh, we're going to be talking about NVIDIA drivers. That's thing DXVK, D9VK. Don't get those confused. And, And if we're lucky, we might even mention Yorg. I know. Be scared. And wouldn't you know it, that was a thoroughly beaten horse. Now we get on to the news. But before <laughs> that, we do need to... Nope, don't think. do it. Uh-uh. You're, you're going to try to be appreciative to the people who help finance this show, and it's horrible. I, I can't stand for it. Show me a commercial. <laughs> Read me a mattress set. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Just because every single one of you are so awesome, and chances are, uh, if you've been watching us for the past... As long, how long has it been? Seven years? Two weeks. Yeah. Max. <laughs> Seven years of Linux Gamecast Weekly. Chances are you probably already know how to um, provide some of that lovely, lovely uh, support. But hey, uh, if you'd like to um, kick us a few shackles over on patreon.com uh, forward slash Linux Gamecast, you get access to our Discord where uh, you can find us usually hanging around... Uh, the rest of the week when we're not live doing something and even when we're live there's that little uh discord chat bit down there so we're always paying attention even if we don't say anything i know i am <laughs> all right <laughs> you suck at selling stuff brad hey um, absolutely <laughs> beautiful people we do want to thank each and every one of you 114 beautiful party patrons making this show possible paying the bills for our hosting and all yeah. the other fun stuff that goes along <laughs> with it come get some perks if not tell us to pound sand that's cool too we'll still love you um let's see quick show shirts jill show Yes, yes, you can get some some Hellock strawberry mayo shirts as well, as well as LWW, or the faces of of the beautiful Ven, Jordan, and Pedro. Look, look at all three yes, of them beautiful up on that t shirt, man. <laughs> and there's Frank. Speaking of Frank, yeah, we got Frank. Hey, Frank, what's up? That's our fuck wall, because you psychopaths, you glorious beautiful people have helped us put together the studio. Helping us cheat so you could hang out for all eternity. There's one bit of room. We got a bit of, bit of a wish zone. That's how you end up on that no-no list. Uh, that's stuff we're using. If you're just curious about the things, the poor financial decisions that uh, we're going to be making, <laughs> that's where everything's listed. It's kind of boring. If you're looking for something more entertaining, go check out Pedro and Jordan's uh, Wish Zone. They have far more entertaining things on it. And uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have Bitcoin, Magic Internet Money. If you want to kick us that, that's awesome. We will thank you for that. And uh, Libra Bay. Is that it? Are we, are we done? Yep. Da, 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 da. Yay. Pretty much, Wait, I guess we, we have... I, just, I just need oh. to ask, uh, what, no. what's up with Adrian? Adrian? Yes. Well, I'll <laughs> tell we you go. what's up with Adrian. It's our <laughs> latest, latest patron, which means Yay. you have to... <laughs> Tell me not one, nay. You have to give me two facts about Adrian. Okay. And one so of them can't be Ad- that there's two ways. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> okay, throwing the, them curveballs. Okay, so Adrian is usually that person uh, that I use as an example uh, when I need to specifically call someone out. And I don't know why. Maybe it's just a name that starts with A, but that is uh 
a fact. Uh, the second fact <laughs> is uh, that is totally is something I plagiarized from Yahtzee. True story, ladies ah. and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so as is tradition, let's start with some drivers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So NVIDIA's new display driver, 435.21, has been released with some very important updates. Uh, first off, it fixed an annoying bug that could cause Vulkan applications to generate spurious warning messages about a missing NV-GLX extension. I have dealt with that one before <laughs> on several different games, so I'm happy that's fixed. And they also fixed the NV encode API driver to correctly reject the encoding of sequences with resolution smaller than what the NVENC supports. And yeah, that's actually been an issue with video codecs for many, many years. So I'm I'm glad uh, that has been fixed. Thank you, NVIDIA. Yeah, and. Uh... The one of the things that caught my eye was like, oh, they're fixing SLI issues mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in 2019. <laughs> well, I guess I suppose those CUDA workloads still make use of SLI technically. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was going to roll out right there, man. Yeah. Because, <laughs> um, you know, if you buy a Threadripper motherboard, you get a couple of those. Yeah, you can SLI get versus, two yeah. by 16 slots. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but that's what that's for. You know, the whole SLI thing for gaming's. I, I don't want to say unfortunately dead. It never, ever really was a thing, was it? Not no, really. I, there were some games that had, games you, had, you, had, yeah, uh, you had the SLI profile for those games on Linux. Yeah. It was just Doom 3 and Serious Sam 3. Didn't, Doom, yeah. didn't that make more sense when we were living in the fantasy world where the high-end GPUs were 350 bucks? Uh -huh. <laughs> that was the high-end, yes. remember? Yeah, yes. right. <laughs> Way back when. Uh, but they did the update for the Vulkan, the OpenGL GLX yeah. support for Prime, the rendering offload. That's neat, right, Pedro? Yep. Yeah, that could actually prove very interesting. Uh, yeah. Mostly... Uh, Let's say you have one of those mining cards or one of those compute cards that don't have any uh, outputs. Uh, you still want to use them to render, say, your desktop, but only your motherboard happens to have one of those outputs. So let's say you have a Ryzen APU or an Intel CPU, and you want, on your desktop, obviously, and you want to be able to use that NVIDIA Tesla as your... Uh, graphics card as it would be uh, the case <laughs> that this basically allows for that you could literally get the, that tesla to output to the um it makes the CPU. thing work ladies and gentlemen <laughs> yeah. all right that's yes. what it does but only i mean if you want to play around with that support you're going to need like the patched version of the x server which i'm sure is in the r <laughs> right like a pirate yeah that's kind of brilliant. This thing up next, we have DX VK version 133. Bug fixes and improvements. Nothing major in here. Um, a couple of fixes for rendering artifact issues and all that fun stuff. Fixed an issue with Steam VR, the performance test, which you can run at a Proton, mm. which, you know, I read this and can I was like, you well, run? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming, right? You read that and you're like, wait a minute. I remember them releasing that. Now there's a tool to run it. Unless the desired result was a spite crash steam to desktop, because that's all I got from it. Yeah, that, that, that's all I've ever gotten from it. That's a, That's been the thing since, yeah. like, yeah. they released it. Well, according to this bug fix, uh, it fixed the broken rendering caused by a bug in the deferred in a context implementation. So maybe, maybe they fixed it. it there was a slight hang before it crashed to desktop. Now it just has a more fluid crash to the desktop. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that could yeah. definitely be it. What do you got? That was Joe? cool. Well, they also fixed, and this is something a lot of people were complaining about on the, on the Steam forums and whatnot, that when playing Far Cry Primal, there's a worked around weird a weird issue causing the game's graphics to turn red. And I'd heard that complaint from a lot of people. And he had even seen a YouTuber playing with it with that problem. <laughs> so I'm glad that was fixed. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Always making updates. Uh, but we're not done with that because we got a little bit of D9VK 
version bump yeah. on this Atmos. <clears throat> yes, a new version of D9VK 0.20 is out, thanks to Joshua Ashton. And this version is called Frog Cookie. I thought that was cute. Frog, frog cookies cookie. detected. Eat the frog <laughs> yeah. cookies. Yes. <laughs> Ven's, uh, Ven's browser can't display the um, emoji, apparently. Oh, it's just two it can't. squares. Oh, you have your security <laughs> up too high. <laughs> I'm kidding. So <laughs> include this includes several performance improvements. And what was really neat is it implemented Process Vertices, which is a software vertex processing system, which uses a ge geometry shader that emits no vertices and does buffer writes. So it should really increase performance uh, when rendering vertices. And also uh, stopped using device underscore local memory for shader constant buffers. So yeah. that is and actually very good. <laughs> that's a very good one to bring up as well, Jill, yeah. because uh, you see the parentheses at the end of that particular one, and it says uh, Deutz Shin. And you, it's mm. like that name sounds familiar. Oh, yeah, that's the developer of uh, Dixfix, DXVK. Oh! That's, oh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's DOG yeah. developer of the uh, particular technology that D9 VIX uh, happened to uh, build huh. itself off of. So, cool. yeah, the Dix VIX mm -hmm. developer is also fixing stuff on D9 VIX. <laughs> nice. It's it's an interesting time, man. I mean, the progress between <laughs> these two amazing. projects. Um, <laughs> talk about, like, future-proofing. I think you might... I don't know why you'd be watching this show. Uh if you're just like, hey, man, I use Windows. I love the Windows. Man, give me more Windows 10. But as far as game preservation, a decade from now, most of the stuff you're mm -hmm. playing is not going to work on whatever service you're subscribed to from Redman to stream your games to you. So, you know, oh, I'm glad, glad mm. stuff like this is around. But, ladies and gentlemen, one thing that has always traditionally been associated with August <laughs> is October. <laughs> Yes, it's spooky, spooky August. Not really. Well, uh, apparently the fine folks at Humble decided, you know what's <laughs> what's a good time to release a horror-ish game bundle right now, and it's currently going on. Uh, you have three Linux games. You have Butcher. You have uh, Beholder and Darkwood. If you pay uh, 10 bucks, you get Inside, which is basically Limbo 2. And admittedly, I paid 10 bucks so I could get Inside, Limbo 2, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because yeah, it, 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 it is guess, kind hmm. of a fun uh, looking game. I saw uh, the trailer. It's like, oh, I, I, I really want to play that. I don't know. On the scale <laughs> of like eating little buddies, what, what's the feels on this one? Uh, absolutely the same because clearly, clearly, uh, the fine folks who <laughs> develop Little Nightmares were very much inspired uh. by Limbo. So this, yeah, this is just more of that. So I very oh. much look forward to playing this. Uh, the yeah, but yeah, Halloween is still a ways off, and I wonder what it is that they have planned for that particular <laughs> occasion that they would decide to release the horror games now. Um, yeah. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> But hey, man, Butcher looks neat for a buck. You can throw that, and I'm sure all yeah. this. This is kind of weird. Uh, this is agony is actually uh, really odd looking, and I really want to play it. So that's also in the a buck uh, tier. <laughs> Proton's really changed the game because it used to oh, be. Yeah. I've been like, oh, we have three Linux titles now, and I'm like this is one of the reasons mm -hmm. I like before mm -hmm. it was this easy. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, now Humble Monthly makes sense. Here, take some more money from me, Humble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is, I, I have a collection of games, and the ones that don't work, yeah, give them away, because I'm good like yeah. that. <laughs> Jill, are you excited about any ooky spooky games in that? <clears throat> Not really. Those aren't, aren't <laughs> my <laughs> kind of games. But I do like ones that are Limbo-esque, and I did love Amnesia. So certain certain horror games I can deal with, how, and I did like how, Alien. How the hell are you going to be watching some Dark Crystal and be like, I don't like horror games? Yeah, <laughs> that's not horror to me. That's a that's, fair. That's, that's dark a fair point. Fan, Muppets are nothing dark but horror. That's dark fantasy. That's dark fantasy. <laughs> oh, that's different because I said so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, man. I'm not judging. Uh, York. 
Mm-hmm. We we Yay. basically followed this game since inception. Gang yeah. updates, yeah. not point eleven. A uh, couple of big ones. They've added joypad support, local multiplayer that takes place via split screen. Now we have particle effects, and they well, as they this guy has listened about the online multiplayer GUI. Apparently, that rhymed with a hot mess. So it's been revamped. <laughs> it looks good. Uh, after I found out where I could download it, you might want to fix that, Brad. Because if you want Linux binaries, uh, get the development version, which is floating somewhere on this site. Control F D, I think, will hook you up. Mm. And I tried it on the Threadbooper 1920X, 32 gig of Jules RAM, 2060. It launches. It's got that going for it. Didn't do that last time I tried this game. And um, didn't try it with the controller, but I just kind of moved around. I was like, oh, all right. Uh, I don't know if it's the frame pacing or the camera. It's using Panda 3D. And no, I haven't mm-hmm. heard that in a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't seem very fluid. And I didn't have enough time this afternoon to throw an overlay on it to find out what the actual frame It's perfectly playable. It just didn't feel smooth. But online multiplayer should be considered alpha. And it's kind of like Micro Machines, man. Right, Pedro? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, isn't, didn't we try this one, or maybe it was one that looked really similar to this one, uh, multiplayer? Because th- they didn't introduce multiplayer with this one, did they? Or am I? No, it's been around for no, a while. Okay, no, it's, it's been, been around, around for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm pretty sure we tried playing this online at some point. Mm-hmm. It was probably one of those streams before we started doing the regular weekly streams, but I'm pretty sure we played this, you and me, Ven. I'm pretty sure it was the two of us. Mm. I, I'm not going to try it because I don't want to undo any therapy. If... <laughs> but yeah, no, it was janky back then, and looking at it now, it doesn't look any better. And yeah, you can totally get the Linux version from Itch. If mm. you just click the Itch link, it, you can download the, uh, the Linux... Mm-hmm. release so yeah yeah panda 3d what else is using panda 3d nowadays because yeah. i honestly can't think of anything it's something we're kind of in danger of man you look like ogre 3d and panda and stuff like that yeah. I mean, who's using ogre for anything right now uh mm. torchlight yeah who's using ogre yeah, for anything right. right now <laughs> torchlight <laughs> oh. all right games games made in the last five years and anything in active development say torchlight again i'll mute you that's what i thought jill <laughs> i'm not coming up with anything either but i remember playing some ogre games <laughs> yeah so um cool yeah i've i had seen you guys play this actually a long time ago and um i'm on itch.io all the time looking for for new games to talk about and play um but was also um i noticed um actually there was some some performance improvements to me it seemed to be running a lot better and uh they do you wonder do you think maybe that's got anything to do with yeah. the new computer <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, <laughs> but I, yeah, well, I think, but the last one I was running on my 1060 and now I have a RX 580. So, Monster. but, it, but it could be, it could be, maybe it, it, it renders it better. <laughs> it is playable and it's completely free and it, it seems like it'd be a good time. So go try it out. Uh, it'll be in our show notes along with every single thing, Alex, but Pedro, I believe, mm-hmm. sir, you are correct. Nintendo probably about to sue somebody oh mm-hmm. yeah so um continuing on this tiny unofficial mini series that we have of all these projects you previously on you got served by who yeah. Nintendo, but of course nintendo right yeah so uh someone has gone ahead and decompiled super mario 64 and then they decided you know what's a good idea let's dump it all on github and they did it's all there you can get the whole thing. It was about uh, a week ago, uh, and it's all there. Uh, you can build it. You can play with it. You can do things, and it's uh, well, it's interesting. <laughs> now, Nintendo, you know, litigious as they are, you know that they can't really sue them for reverse engineering the game. I love and... this. If you want to build it on Windows for Windows, <laughs> install WSL on a distro of choice and follow the Linux guy. Yay. Pretty much. <laughs> awesome. 
But yeah, the, the Nintendo can't really go out and sue them uh, for just reverse uh, engineering the game and then putting out the results. Correct. Public... They can. Doesn't mean they're going to mm. win. I, it, yeah. <laughs> one, they, yeah. They can try. <laughs> but yeah, if uh, precedent says anything, is that companies don't tend to come out on top on those ones. No, I was uh, like doing some reading earlier. And did you know that the lot behind Persona, the video game on PlayStation, right? The R R P S C give it to me, sugar uh that emulator, the one we talk mm -hmm. about every week. They sent a takedown notice to their Patreon page. To Patreon. Uh, they're not the uh. first ones. Uh there was another game that sent uh takedown because yeah. They Simply were showing because it ran on their emulator. Yes, because they were showing screenshots of it running on their emulator, and uh, that was not a thing that they supported, so they said, no, you can't use our intellectual property like that. And, well, this wasn't about screenshots. They were like, no, you can't This you can't let this game run on your emulator because... Yeah, they can say whatever they want. The only thing that they have grounds on is the intellectual property that's being displayed on, say, screenshots mm -hmm. that they post on their blog Ladies or Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you to this part two of my sentence. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah, Nintendo, uh, they are probably going to end end up suing someone because you're getting way ahead of yourself they're not at a 1.0 release yet oh yeah i suppose they're not <laughs> they, they do tend to wait it's like oh yeah uh metroid 2 uh is now 1.0 yeah dmc the take a out. Mm -hmm. version they're like hey we, we're, we're kind of nearing completion after this seven year project and so it's like get that offline <laughs> So, but, you know, yeah, legally, there's really nothing to be done about this because this doesn't include the ROM. You got to build that in yourself. So, yep. hey, it might make for uh, some interesting learning. That'll be kind of brilliant. <laughs> All right. Uh, Pedro, what's up next? Up next, we're going to be throwing chairs at a uh, um, bit of an interesting one. It's Bayonetta. <laughs> And welcome back to the Chairquisition. That's right. I'm not your friendly neighborhood Canadian. Old Man Vin introducing this segment because <laughs> this week we're throwing the chairs at Bayonetta. That's right. From Platinum Games, publisher by Sega. Strangely enough, on the PC. I know, right? Give me part two. Uh, you can pick this up for $14.99 wet limey pounds or $19.99 wet stinky cashes. What is it? It's fucking Bayonetta. Come on, this game's been out forever. You know what it is. You play as a <laughs> witch. You kick ass. I take the occasional name, cock smash a dragon or two. However you want to do it, man. But it's got a face. The chair acquisition. You know how it works, man. It, one chair is good. Two chairs. It's all right. Three chairs. I'll pick it up. Four chairs. Just take our mothering money we got that system we're going to roll through the qa segment and tell you how it works on our three count them three separate distributions of choice and i'm going to start out with debian and mm -hmm. our thread booper 9000 which is a 1920x uh, with 32 gigajoules of ram or an ssd got an nvidia 2060 with this joint and we are running this courtesy of proton with d9vk which made this game playable so we wanted to play around with it Launches Yay. out of the box mm -hmm. with Proton uh, 411-3. That's on D9VK, and I've ran it. It went from barely playable with a 2060 at 1080p. And I mean struggling to just keep that 60, and it couldn't do it. Two, solid 60, streamed it last night. While stream, it also does that at UHD, 30, 40 by 2160. Everything cut on 11, no problem. Graphic-wise, unfortunately, there's a glitch. There is a glitch with anything that's chrome surface, you get a rainbow effect. If you can live with that, all right, but I got to get a chair on that business. Control wise, exclude controller out of the box, no issues. It just works. Can't complain there. Um, so, quality assurance given to the game. That's three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on Ubuntu 18.04. It did launch beautifully. And on my AMD RX 580, 8 gig was gameplay at 60 frames per second. And on my NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, gameplay at 60 frames per second. And comparing, actually, my two GPUs, 
there was more flickering on the shiny textures with the NVIDIA card than there was on the AMD. In fact, on the AMD, I didn't even hardly notice it much. Um, so I mostly played it on my RX 580 and wasn't bothered by the flickering from shiny objects. And the control works very well with keyboard and gerbil and with my 8-bit do. So I gave it four chairs. Yeah, and over here in Solus Land for the time being, um, with the Ryzen 3700X and the GTX 1080, it launches out of the box, no issues whatsoever. The performance, yeah, the video that you're watching right now was recorded at 3840 by 2160 downsampled uh, to 1080p, uh, and it stayed at 60 all the time. Uh, V-Sync was on, and I didn't really see the need to disable it, because it was just at 60 all the time. The graphics, yeah, you can see the flickering textures. It, they don't really affect uh, the uh, gameplay, but they're there. The controls, the DualShock um, little controller business didn't work, but that's not the fault of the game, that's the fault of Solus. And, uh, yeah, no, uh, Solus tends to reel its... Uh, ugly head every now and then but then it shoves it right back up its own ass so yeah the with the 8-bit do and the steam controller it, they it, the game works just fine so three chairs all right we got through that and i can find the right buttons there we go <laughs> so we all know how pedro feels about his distribution maybe he'll remind us three or four more fucking times for the night's over but <laughs> what we gotta get to I still love you, Solus. Uh, deal with that. Um, <laughs> did we find it fun? Now, everyone knows what I'm going to say. Come on. What's the point in that, man? Because this game, where do we even start with this, man? Unhinged. Yes. Unhinged. That's a good place to start. But you might have expected that when the protagonist sports gun heals. Yes. <laughs> Maybe it's like, yeah, I'm pretty good at that, man. Because you know what? At its core, Bayonetta... It's all about old school, button mashing, arcade fun. Everything about this fucking game is just over the top and it flat out refuses to take itself seriously at any chance it's given. And that can be a tall order, especially when your subject matter, boil it down. It's angels and demons and you're effectively on a quest in game to kill God. So you might want to keep that light and they did a good job of that most of your time. Uh, a lot of cutscenes, Pedro is going to expand on that, but most of your time is going to be spent in a spectacle brawler, you know, filled with like the occasional BDSM inspired special attacks. There's some kinky stuff in there, man, if you're into that, <laughs> but that kind of boils back to, all right, it's, it's laughably kinky. It's, it's, it's just so over the top because you're going to be killing baddies. You're going to earn your style points, collect Sonic rings, make no mistake, Sega, and, uh, Occasionally make a pit stop into hell to pick up new weapons, attacks, and of course, lollipops. Yeah, lollipops. <laughs> if you were following me last night, man, I was genuinely worried about giving Miss Bayonetta the diabetes during my last <laughs> playthrough strictly due to lollipop consumption. But hey, man, they get the job done. And if that's not enough, there's legitimately like four hours of skippable cutscenes to fill in the blinks between the battles. You're probably going to want to watch them all, even if you don't like them, because game video game or not, there's a good story in here. I mean, it gets interesting. It kept me engaged. It's like, I want to see what happens. Whoa, wait, there's an anime movie based on I'm watching that when I get done with the game. It does look a little bit dated, just a little bit. Uh, it does have the graphical glitches and, you know, a couple of irritating quick time events. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's still worth the asking price and you know flaws and all flaws and all i i can still say you know go check it out with a solid <laughs> three yay so this game had lots of opening cinematics and training to go through but that was to be expected and actually for me this is one of my favorite genre genres of games third person action and hack and slash really enjoy it and Bayonetta is a fun game to play when you just want to sit back and kill some monsters, creatures, ethereals, or otherwise. And I really liked the art style. Kind of reminds me of a cross between steampunk, anime, and post-apocalyptic modern. The soundtrack is really great too, but sometimes it can be a bit grindy when it keeps repeating uh, sequences over and over again. 
But I, I like the games that utilize cinematics to tell a story like Tomb Raider. And I really enjoyed the tongue-in-cheek humor of the game as well, most definitely. And I gave it four chairs. Okay. <laughs> well, personally, I am conflicted. I've got on at length in the past about how I much prefer games that show uh, what's happening rather than telling you what's happening. And Bayonetta has absolutely no qualms in showing everything. So I like that. Uh, I've also mentioned several times that I prefer games which, you know, allow you to play them. Um, games that actually give you some agency as to what your character is doing. And Bayonetta, it seems really happy to take control away from you and drop you in the middle of the cutscene, showing our eponymous, uh, titillating character doing all of this awesome stuff. Stuff that uh, we could totally be doing in-game, Platinum. Just saying. Um, in fact, I'd much rather be doing that stuff than sitting through yet another cutscene. But I feel reluctant to skip the cutscenes because I want to know more about the story. But more on that later. Um, then there's the quick time events. <sighs> they packed a game full of Tiny little fuckers. And the quick time events, in my <laughs> not so humble opinion, are the bane of gameplay. It's like the cheapest form that you could actually introduce a mechanic to a video game is a quick time event. It's like, oh yeah, we're going to play a video and then you get to press a key and hope that it goes well. Hey! Uh, no, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, however, I do uh, find myself wanting to play more of Bayonetta. Uh, just so I can experience more of the completely bonkers, over-the-top choreography, combat, and the just about everything else that's going on. And just so I can get more of the completely unhinged, as Ven mentioned, and uninhibited story of Legs McProtagonist mm. person over there. Uh, because she is amazing, she don't give a damn, and I love it. Uh, it's actually a, a video game that I very much enjoyed playing despite all my teeny tiny niggles with it. So, three chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that seals it, man. Uh, verdict, <laughs> gun heels. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it looks like yes. it is a solid check it out. Oh, really, the only gosh. thing you can have awesome. against this is like if you hate having a good time, if you hate fun, then <laughs> you, you might not want to give this to like a five-year-old because mm -hmm. you know <laughs> captain america would definitely have an issue with the language because they, they give zero fucks it's like whatever <laughs> if you've always wondered i always like to say if you're wondering like what it would come across as like something tarantino inspired video game a lot like this oh, yeah. with a direction i wouldn't mind a live action movie starring steve buscemi as the lead but mm. that's just my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Buscemi is Bayonetta. Coming up next, we're going to get to your hate mail where you can tell me that that's probably a horrible idea, old man Ben, and don't have it. Chances are, if you've been watching us this long, you know exactly what I'm going to say right now. So how about we just cut to the chase and no. you go to LakesGameCast.com, nope. hit the contact <laughs> button, and do the thing. And you know what the thing is, just pick LGC Weekly from the show, fill out the form, and we'll be happy to feature your message, unless you're a game developer. At which point, if you don't send us three keys, we'll mock you relentlessly. How's that? Nope. Does that sound fair? Sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're it hired. may sound horrible, but it doesn't sound anywhere near as horrible as Ven tries to tell people uh, that they look like. Uh... Beautiful, beautiful people. I, I would like a how-to video. I would like to believe that made sense coming out. It just didn't survive the Pedro translation matrix. Possibly. <laughs> uh, I've been drinking a lot. Uh, a so, uh, Mobile Decay uh, posted a comment on one of your uh, one of our YouTube videos, yeah. and they said, "As soon as you called me a beautiful person, I knew you were a liar." Frowny so, face. <laughs> yes, frowny face. And uh, this came from uh, the Da Vinci, how to get Da Vinci working on Debian. Yeah, man. I just yeah. <laughs> was like, I read that. I was like, listen, man. Listen, old man, Vin. Yeah, come gather around. <laughs> Self-hatred can be beautiful, too. Okay? <laughs> LGC cares. Yeah. 
<laughs> You're all beautiful. Mostly because yeah. we can't see you. Yeah, and our patrons are all beautiful people. And sometimes Ben even calls them beautiful party people. Us beautiful party <laughs> people. So that's appropriate, too. I don't know you know, mom. I think out of every one of us, Ven is the one that would know better than to call people beautiful. I call people beautiful, man. I call people sexy. Because you know what? Sometimes you just need to fucking hear that from another human being. Aww. And that can light your day up, man. Yeah. Think about it. That's right. Because it helps out. Yeah. Okay. Now we have a wall of text. Oh, yeah. Go for it, please, Marisma. You can trip your way through this one. Okay. So, Veris Hanuda, the Naked Truth himself, uh, says, I was surprised at your surprise of a tabletop role-playing app. Have you ever come across Rolly Stream? Uh, it's a pretty sophisticated role pro uh, role-playing framework with a character sheet editor that can accept protocode and formula. Uh, you can import maps and tokens and create a fog of war over maps, which with layers, sorry, I am really screwing this up. Uh, Why do you think <laughs> you give it to updates. you, baby? Yes. Uh, it also <laughs> has been accepted now into the KDE games fold and can run as a headless server in a Docker container or as a flat pack and snap. The project has been nice. around for a long time. Once again, I am surprised that you might not have heard of it. Give it a go, or at least acknowledge its existence. Acknowledge it! Um, <laughs> great for a uh, great lot of nonsense this week, guys. Keep it up, or chilled as you prefer. Yes. <laughs> Aww. So and I bet I you... Actually, yeah. <laughs> I hadn't heard of uh, Rolly Top, or Rolly Steam, or whatever it's called. Um, it's... Um, yeah, it's it's a lot more involved than the usual tabletop simulator type of situations we usually get. But it, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't was I did not know it was a thing. It's D and D, mm -hmm. man. I think right. Yeah. Is that yeah. where you keep I... track of numbers? <laughs> yeah, it, it, I it's think... a tabletop sim, so it can do everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you... I think jo Jordan probably actually does know about it. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think we, he we does. Do... <laughs> he would know. Oh. Yeah, if he did, well... he would be using it. Like, there's my <laughs> well... evidence. We use Roll20, so and that has worked very well. And he has said there are other options available when we play D and D games on on the stream. So, <laughs> so we're even. You assume he does, and I assume he doesn't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing: maybe he does, and it's really not that good, and that's why he doesn't mention it all that often. I don't know. Yeah. I, I kind of. He's at a concert this week after he died. Yes. He went to a concert. And <laughs> he died of uh, some kind of or sensor case, and then he went to a concert. I, I, I hope he's listening live because there's no way he'd go back and watch this. He's like, shut up. I know what I'm talking about. Hey, if you would like to put words in Jordan's mouth yourself, send us some of that feedback. We love it. So we get in touch with us through our contact form. Please use that. I saw today, I was checking the Twitter thing and like the unsolicited message folder and like 16 of those and most of that spam I don't want you to get tied up in the spam so <laughs> use the contact form or leave a YouTube comment <laughs> or Patreon leave a comment on the post so we can see it that's why it's there yep. pretty pretty please because mm. on that bombshell mm. there we go <laughs> a, little, a little too much nah, yeah. maybe not enough <laughs> because for the 367th time ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and then so you can get in touch with me at the aforementioned uh vin at linux gamecast.com don't use that that's horrible you'll look in the blacklist uh at vin stone i think we're at yeah it's at vin stone yes. yeah yeah uh, it's no. at vin on at master, vin on master. master. <laughs> okay <laughs> Change my diaper when I'm done, baby. Um, <laughs> I'll get in touch with you there. It's kind of brilliant. It's kind of beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, on Twitter at Jill underscore Linux Girl. And I'm also at Jill underscore Linux Girl at mass.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> you can You're find me there. Brands. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. That's pretty much it. That, that, that's about as unified as you can get. At unaccounted four. That's F O U R because someone had taken the number four already. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I I didn't really hit the lottery with that one. Did you just like non-ironically say ticket? 
Yes. <laughs> I was hoping that one Credit. would slide. Nope. <laughs> I knew about Tree Fitty. Uh, far to Tree Fitty. <laughs> okay. Aww. You know, of all Yay. the crap that I've said in this show, this is that one thing. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to thank our executive Yay. producers, Arthur and Inbox Dog, Empty, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barbara, Mike G, Barbara, Barbara Elias, Elias Hoplo, 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 Mac Geek, Geek Scott, <laughs> and the mentor, Renee, Jill, <laughs> and <laughs> Steve, one of which is right here, right now. Kim, Chris, Nathan, Simcha, Sildad, Matt, Ryan, Linux, Noob, Evander, Master, Drac, Minijack, uh, Frizo, Mr. Amish, Shane, Bezos, and Jigo. There's a beautiful one. Frizo, O'Dunn, Sorcerer, Sira, Jager. Yes, Fred. I said, Sad. the fuck wall. Shut up, you wall. Like your pen. Quit doing that. This is, this is a family and show. Seriously, thank you, Go everyone away. who's been helping uh, with the fuck wall. You guys and gals that's the are straight that up runs this show. like our game shark, man. Yeah, <laughs> we love sweet. you. <laughs> bye bye, credits. Aww. Bye bye. Bye, Sam. <laughs> no, Frank. Fuck off. <laughs> Hello, no, Frank. Uh -oh. All right. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>